Hi everyone, welcome back to the Math Talks playlist. I hope you've enjoyed our first two episodes so far, where we've discussed the importance of discourse in the math classroom and how to overcome those barriers to implementation of this critically important strategy in your classrooms. On our last episode, we gave you four practical strategies for overcoming those barriers. Things like embracing student mistakes, using those low floor, high ceiling tasks, embracing the instructional change as a teacher, and establishing those classroom norms in your own room. If you haven't watched those first two episodes, I encourage you to click on the link on your screen now to watch. Today's episode promises to offer more practical strategies to help you get started with math discourse, including some examples of what math talk can look like in action. And to help us along the way with today's conversation, I've invited another guest to join me, Mohammed Gina. Thanks, Mohammed, for, for joining us today. Um, looking forward to our conversation. So could we start uh, by telling us a little bit about yourself and, and sort of your background? Jason, thank you. And hello, everyone. Um, my name is Mohammed Gina. Um, I live and work in Dubai. It's the middle of summer now, so um, wish me luck as we get through the year. Um, yeah, so I'm a mathematics teacher by profession. And I lived and worked, I'm from South Africa, where I lived and worked for most of my teaching career. And I got to a point in my career where I was very interested in curriculum design, instruction, uh, thinking about pedagogy, uh, how do we teach math more effectively in the classroom? What are some of the best strategies to use? I was fortunate enough to teach some really fantastic schools and work with some wonderful teachers and learned a lot along the way. But I got to a point where I realized that design and instruction was quite key for me and important and how teachers were using content in classrooms. And the best place that I could position myself would be at the largest curriculum distributor in the world. So with some luck or by fortune, I found myself taking a job in Dubai, um, working with Houghton Mifflin Harcourt as a math consultant. Um, shipped my, myself and my family over to the UAE and it's been six really wonderful, amazing years that I've learned and grown and, and just seen so much in education that I'm super grateful for. Now, we talked about two practical strategies in the last episode that I'd like to dig into a little deeper with Mohammed. Embracing student mistakes and embracing instructional change. I asked Mohammed a series of three questions to help us uncover more strategies for developing discourse. Well, Mohammed, um, you know, one of the things that we've been talking about during uh, our playlist here on math discourse is uh, how important that discourse is in that classroom discussion. So my question for you as sort of a, a math expert and, and math teacher, math educator, um, is how does a teacher get started with talking with their students in the math classroom? You know, because we, we all know it can be a really big shift for both teachers and students, right? Mm -hmm. Jason, there could have been a better question to get this started. And, and by the way, I would have loved this playlist when I was in the classroom. I was very much interested in how do I get my kids to think and talk math. You know, we all know the, the data around retention rates when kids are able to um, share their thinking or their ideas. And that's something that was always important to me. It's something I, I honestly struggled with, you know. Um, I would have kids who are always very focused on what's the right answers, getting 99 and 100%, but just tell me the answer. And I wanted to change that. So awesome question to get us started. And I'm gonna be able to speak to this from my experience. I think that's the best place to come from. I would think it starts on you as a teacher changing your mindset, changing your thinking around how and why you teach mathematics. And for me, it's about establishing a bit of a mantra, a bit of a brain tattoo where you really know and understand that math is not a destination, it's a journey. It's this journey we take the kids on, an opportunity to help them learn, grow, acquire new skills, design new thinking, and really access parts of their brain that no other subject could. 
So it starts with that, knowing and understanding that the answer is important, but it's not everything. It's about the journey. It's about how you get there, how I help my kids get, get there, and really setting them up for success in that regard. Yeah, I, I think um, you're, uh, you're right on the mark when you talk about um, that our thinking must change, right? I mean, that's, that's really where um, we need to approach this from a, a completely different perspective. Um, and I love that saying that it's about the journey um, and not just the destination, right? That's so important. Really great insight there from Mohammed. Now, as so often is the case, one of the things that often makes us hesitate when trying something new is the length of time that it might take us to implement and see progress toward those positive results. So, I asked Mohammed to share with us a little more about when we might expect to see changes in our classroom and in our students once we begin to implement math discourse. How long does it take to sort of begin to see students um, improve with that discourse and, and adopt that strategy a little bit more? Mm, that's a difficult one. And I'll tell you why, because if, like we said, every student is different, right? Some students might just cling to this really quickly and others might need more time. And it's all about really undoing the thinking and um, uh, the thought process of the child that's been set in stone really since they were really little you know so it's about undoing that why do you want to know how i did it you're just going to do it up on the board anyway right it's about undoing all of that and about setting those um those new key uh, those new targets for them right and what do we value in this classroom okay so i, I think it's too challenging for me to put a time on it what i will say is if you as the teacher adopt these um, uh, routines and this attitude and bring that into your classroom, for sure you're going to see that happening faster than you'd think, right? So it's, it's a bit challenging to put a time on it. And in addition to that, it needs to take some time, right? We're on this journey together. Yeah, it needs to take some time. We need to, I'm going to say, you will be pleasantly surprised at how your kids take to this when you set those routines. Yeah. Well, and, and again, it goes back to that. Um, I guess it's not a, it's not about the destination, right? It's about the journey. So it's not about getting to a point where um, we're perfect at it. We're always going to be improving with that math discourse. So, Okay. So how about that for an answer? We really don't know. Some kids will adapt quickly to the change and others might take a little bit longer. And have we ever really mastered discourse in the classroom? Or are we always going to be on the journey toward improvement in both discourse and mathematics? Remember, it's the journey, not the destination. Finally, I wanted to hear from Muhammad more about the teacher's role in a discourse-focused math classroom. Let's see what he says. Um, dig in a little bit more to what the role of the teacher is. I think I think you've kind of already scratched mm -hmm. the surface of that, but. Um, What's the teacher's role in a, in a classroom that's centered on this course? Oh, super important. Really good question. And it's really critical to the success of, of establishing a good mathematical discourse in your classroom. Right. And let's let's understand first off that every child is different. Every child is unique in how they like to communicate or the level or the depth or the type of communication they'd like to have. So we need to keep that in mind. So you as the teacher need to assume a different role. Right? We've all heard sage on the stage, guide on the side. Okay, I understand that. Right? I need to be guiding and facilitating the, the, the kids thinking and learning. But we need to double click on that. We need to go a bit further. You as the teacher need to change the way you position things to your kids. Here's an example. Jason, tell me what you got for the answer. Could be replaced with, Jason, tell me what you did to get to the answer. Right? two very different questions based on exactly the same problem in the same time in the classroom with the same kid. So when a teacher says, no, it's too difficult for me, it's, it's not possible. Listen, we need to change our approach. That's that's what that, that's the starting place for you as the teacher. It's, so understanding what is it that you're valuing. If you're valuing the answer, then that's what the kids are going to give you. Yeah. But if you're valuing the process and your questions that you ask them, 
relate to their thinking around it, then that's what you're going to get. Another thing I see a lot in the math classroom is formative assessment cues, right? So teachers wanting or needing to collect data on their kids learning so they can plan and drive further instruction. Really important in today's math classroom, right? It's not a one size fit all. I need to know where my kids are so that I can build going forward. And, and we see wonderful AI tools and a lot of um, uh, cool techniques that teachers are using in the classrooms. I was just on a I was just on a Zoom call the other day with a bunch of um, grade four students, and the teacher had them hold up this whiteboard and share their answers. And now it was it was it was fantastic. Imagine the classroom was like twenty five screens, all on cam, and they all can see the answers on teaching. The teacher in seconds can gauge who's getting it right and who's getting it wrong. Sounds very productive, right? Except we valued the answer. Okay, so intent fantastic execution we can work on that so rather let's talk about how you got the answer what was the steps involved mm, that's interesting you decided to draw a table for it right oh i see um, um ahmed you decided to do a diagram what does that square represent that's the kind of thinking and again it starts on you as the teacher devaluing the answer you know that's not what's all important and then you're going to say to me that's what they get the marks for well then you should change the way we mark those exam papers then, right? Especially during the formative stage. So we're setting those kids up for success where we're valuing the process. I mean, Jason, you've got kids and I have kids as well. We often sit with our kids and help them with math sums. And how many times Sarah said to me, but my teacher doesn't do it that way, you know, right? And how many times they just want to write, but the answer's right, Dad. Like, yeah, but come on, you need to think a bit more, but the answer's right. You can see what the kid is established in their mind is being valuable. So it starts off there. Then it's more specifically, your role as the teacher has to be one where you are kind of an investigator. You're asking the questions of why, how come, when, what if. Okay. Think about when you're trying to prove anything in mathematics. It works for one. Does it work for another three? Can it work infinitely times? Is it if I replace it with X, will it still work? And that thinking, trust me, can start really low in elementary school. So it worked when you had two. What about if I put in four? Can you still group them? Is that still possible? What about if you had eight? What, if you, what can we recognize about those numbers? Well, the even, what does that mean? They can be grouped into, oh, okay, that's interesting. So establishing those and planting those seeds for your kids, right? That's how they're going to take ownership of that. So just to summarize that, it, it's about the approach that needs to change from you as the teacher. Okay. It's understanding that wrong answers are good answers, right? So that they can allow us to have better discussions. It's about devaluing the answer and more the process like we've spoken about over and over here today again. It's assuming a new role as a teacher. It's about being an investigator. It's about asking the questions. I can recall a child in grade eight saying to me, what do you mean you don't know? It's like, I don't know. Well, what do you mean? You're the teacher. I don't know. And then the next day, getting a nasty email from a parent, an unhappy parent, like, <laughs> how do you not know how to solve some? Right? Like, I don't know. You know, that productive struggle, you have to allow to go through that. I heard you say in there, um, that we have to that that we have to stop valuing the answer as much as the process, and that's my big takeaway from what from what you said. Um, and you know, you mentioned uh, we both have kids and, and we help them with their with their math. And I can't tell you how many times um, my my kids have said to me, "Dad, just tell me the answer." Just tell me the answer. I, I, yeah. I, you know the answer? Don't, don't. You know the answer? Tell me the answer. <laughs> And, and so, you know, I'm always encouraging them to think about the process and, you know, it's not about getting this one answer right, you know, and it, it kind of goes back to that old saying of give a man a fish, he eats for a day, teach a man to fish, he eats for a lifetime, right? And it's it's this, it's the same thing with math. And it's, it's not even just about, um, uh, uh, you know, getting through that course in math, it's about developing our thinking, you know? And, and so oftentimes I'll tell my own kids here at home, they'll say, well, dad, I'm never gonna use this when I get older anyways. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You may never sit down at, at your job and, and have to use, use the distributive you know, property. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah.
but 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 will you have to think and process information and problem solve oh yeah absolutely you know that's that's part of it so um so i think we're, we're accomplishing a bigger goal by doing that so thanks muhammad for your fantastic insight remember we must embrace mistakes and remember that math discourse is all about that journey and not always about the destination this wraps up our episode three of the Math Talks playlist. Please join us next time as we begin to uncover the four talk moves that will guide this course in your math classrooms. Please leave us some feedback. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the HMH International Content Cares YouTube channel. If you're looking for more content, click on the video to the right of your screen. Welcome to our global community.